This is Public Access Lost Transmissions Part 16. We are going to be doing a night phase, uh, but before we dive into that night phase, the group has decided that they want to try to answer a couple of questions. And so I think what we'll do is we will review the active mysteries that we are thinking about answering questions for, which is On Strange Wings and Slumber Party Summoning Circle. So for Slumber Party, we need to determine if Linnea is possessed by a sorrowful ghost or something more demonic in nature. It's a complexity for your clues presently are a coffee table version of the Codex Gigas, a doll's hand wrapped with white thread, an autograph of Dolores Rodenbecker saying you don't get into magic, magic gets into you. Uh, Linnea sewed Corey's eyes shut while he was passed out. Zachary heard the bell of the church ringing the wrong hour. And then on Strange Wings, um, why don't we tackle Slumber Party first? Um, who wants to make a case for either a sad ghost or a demon? Uh, so I've got a case for a demon. Okay, make it. Uh, the big one is Linnea sewing Corey's eyes shut. <laughs> um, that seems uncharacteristic uh, of <laughs> Linnea as a whole, but uh, a spirit a spirit is explicitly described as being sad, not vengeful or vindictive mm. or anything like that or malicious um so that act in and of itself to me is very malicious very it just seems evil is what you're saying yeah yeah, yeah. um so i think that that's sort of a sign of her demonic possession i think that uh the codex gigas being the devil's bible um i think that there is some legitimacy to that there's maybe some maybe either some passages or even some demonic entity that was part of that book um that uh uh that could, could, do you remember where we found that was that at samantha's that was at samantha's house yeah yeah so you know she could have been flipping through that at samantha's at the party you know it could have attracted some uh unsavory elements there's a lot of evidence that she's into like kind of ritualistic stuff anyway so she might have accidentally summoned something yeah yeah uh and then uh i don't think that this is the first rod and becker to be possessed i think that dolores was possessed mm -hmm. um the idea of magic getting into her mm -hmm. uh you know she we know that she had drowned at some point uh, mm -hmm. in her life and was brought back we don't know if she was brought back to life or just revived my thinking is that whatever demon was or is in Linnea was once in Dolores um oh. and, has, and evacuated her uh and maybe that drowning was some sort of like baptismal ritual or something like that. Mm. Um, and the demon yeah, there's that, that, was... there's that so... kind of classic trope of someone making a deal with a demon for like success on the stage or whatever, but uh, you can imagine that being how Dolores maybe yeah. got involved. She could have, you know, sold her soul or something like that. But mm. I think that it made it might have like when she drowned that was sort of part of maybe a baptismal ritual or like cleansing ritual to get her out of her and it did which is why she's so sort of space cadet now mm. um and i think that the the demon might have some sort of beef with the rotten beckers um Interesting. the doll's hand and white thread might be some sort of like binding ward um because that was given to us by silas or i think it was the priest wasn't it? Oh, you, you, found, found you, it. you found it. Yeah, in yeah. the church or something. Did you find? No, mm, I don't remember. I know you found it though. I know someone. Maybe found it. Uh, I'm mixing it up with my own game. I know. Me too. Yeah, I've got multiple <laughs> campaigns, and I'm like, uh, wait, that clue was found here in the, that one time. Yeah. Well, those those are the three that I'm working with right now. I think there could yeah, be yeah. a case for the doll's hand. I don't remember. What I mean, it was I don't. Found. I don't think you need to necessarily like speculate yet on whether on which who the demon is necessarily. Yeah. I think it's enough to say. I mean, I like the the sort of like hint that Dolores Rodenbecker might have experienced something similar to this and there might be a connection to Linnea, I think it's probably enough, especially the saying, you don't get into magic, magic gets into you. That clearly, I think magic indicates it's something more, it's it's not a ghost, it's something more like summoned or something more, you know, uh, like that, or uh, more of a demon, demonic spirit, um, especially in con with the context of the other clues. I do think you could maybe make an interesting case that Corey's eyes being shut might be like a reflection of the ghost not wanting to cry anymore if it was a if it was a sorrowful ghost like sew up your eyes but i do think the gruesomeness of it probably speaks more to demonic so 
I won't take that away from your, your theory, uh, Jack. Um, you've got three clues, I think, pretty well accounted for so far. Do you want to roll at minus one or? Uh, I mean, I'm open to hearing what the others might have to say, if they have like a way to tie it in or if they have another um, theory. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I was thinking is the doll's hand wrapped in like thread is some kind of part of a summoning ritual but given that that's not really the context in which we found it i'm not sure I mean, my thinking was that maybe it was like a like an amulet of binding like, right. like a protection amulet but uh mm. yeah which might explain why she no no it doesn't have it with her if the yeah. ghost is i mean the mm. demon is actually in possession of her right it's not protecting her currently yeah, was it that True. that she left it at behind when she le visited Rogelio's, uh church? I don't remember where it came from, to be honest. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, 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 I think I think maybe it was in a, in a car that Linnea. Yeah, it might have been. Ah, right, right. I don't know, but in any case, by the way, it I, seems to me like a binding sort of amulet. It does. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, yeah, it, yeah. It, it seems kind like of a, related yeah, to the Rodenbeckers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm into it. Okay, so deep. Okay, uh, so that's four clues. That's a flat roll. Um, if anybody wants to roll it you can unless somebody wants to try to work in this last clue of Zachary heard the bell of the church ringing the wrong hour I'm not sure it speaks to much on this threshold question but I'm open to ideas we we'll save that one for the subsequent yeah I'm fine. yeah who wants to roll I can go ahead and roll yeah you did you did most of the work putting that together Uh, that's an eight. Eight. You are correct. Uh, you have unlocked your next question. If Linnea is possessed by a demon, what is the demon's true name? Um, now, we should talk about true names of demons here in a moment. Um, resolve the mystery by invoking the demon's true name and banishing it. A demon's true name isn't a literal name, but something more symbolic or figurative. A sequence of numbers or objects, a ritual behavior, a particular combination of sounds or smells, a lurid act, and so forth. So basically, you just have to come up with like a cool name for the demon, right? Um, Bells fit well into that then. So I would say so, respect. yeah. yeah. Uh, so that is a complexity four, and that is now available to you. Um, fantastic. Let's talk about this other question on strange wings. We're trying to determine if the deep lake devils, these truly horrific <laughs> flying creatures, are they terrestrial or are they from another planet or dimension? It's a complexity four. You have a fair number of clues here, starting with there was an earthquake in the desert a few days ago, reports of a mass grave uncovered near Los Ojos de los Muertos. A graffiti on the back of a sign for Uncle Jimbo is written backwards saying sacrifice. A black orb that was found in the desert. Uh, Zachary heard the bell of the church. Wait. Oh, I oh, think, I think that clue. We mixed that one up. We missed that yeah, one. Yeah, we mixed it up. Let's yeah. knock that yeah. clue back. Uh, shale oil mining contracts uh, were a thing uh, that, that are in dispute in the area. Nothing that speaks super directly to the question, but this is where mm. your creativity comes into play. What do we think? I mean, the the thing that seems to add up to me is that it's, you know, shale, shale oil mining contracts that, that involves like fracking, right? Which can cause mm -hmm. earthquakes, mm -hmm. which could open up a mass grave and maybe where these things lived <laughs> right yeah. exactly and these and these things were like, like coming out of that grave they are like the vengeful spirits of well that might be that was sacrificed that might be a bridge too far but i do think it's interesting be, yeah. to, to suggest that like there's a lot of suggestion of the of the earth cracking open and therefore yes. that's where the things yeah. are from yeah um that's really interesting uh, that's three clues. That's a that's pretty solid theory, actually. Um, so, Rob, uh, do you think, or uh, do you imply they're terrestrial? Then, yes, I think they're almost like something that was long buried, or you know, buried and forgotten, or was sealed away underground. They're like those creatures in the descent, right? Like they've been down. Right. There and, yeah. 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 Have an alternative theory. 
Oh, let's hear the alternate. Um, so I think that these could be from another place. I think that the black orb in the desert, as well as the earthquake, um, I think the earthquake wasn't from within. It was some sort of maybe pulse or signal or portal opening. Um, and the black orb is sort of like a remnant of that portal of that that means of transportation. Um, I think that this is not the first time that they visited us. I think that the mass grave was a part of a sacrifice uh, that had taken place long ago in the desert to appease these creatures. Oh, to appease things. these extraterrestrials. It's like an ancient mm -hmm. aliens thing. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Um, and so Uncle Jimbo's sign with the sacrifice, like he knows the history here and he knows what these things mm -hmm. want. He's just, maybe he's, you know, in cahoots with them, who knows? But the idea is that he knows what these things are about and they are not from this world. So instead of turning on the shale oil contracts, it turns on the black orb then. Yeah. Essentially. Right, right, yeah. right. But it works uh, in the sacrifice thing, which is, yeah, I mean, the sacrifice could have even been like a means of banishing them. No, that'd be cool. Yeah. Oh, you appeasing. Like, you know, yeah. Yeah. I, th yeah, yeah. I think, I think for the, I think for the earthquake clue, it would be helpful to add in some extra context. Like, was there something mm. about the earthquake that indicated that there was also some kind of like that same night or day? Was there some kind of like, you know, like a uh, cosmic thing going on as well. Like there could have been, but I, but I think mm. if we just want to stick closer to the clue itself, I think that if we like, if we were seismologists and investigated the earthquake itself and the way that the earth broke, we'd realize that it didn't break from, from within yeah, like something it, else broke it. Uh, right. It wasn't on course. a fault or something like that. It was oh. you know, in a place. Mm. The epicenter wasn't in a place that mm. came from a, naturally yeah. occur. Yeah intriguing and so and then we're making and we're, and we're kind of extrapolating a little bit but that's okay it's what we're here to do this idea of the black orb the sacrifices the mass grave speaks to sort of a, a history of like ancient peoples like worshiping and or trying to revere or being scared of these like extraterrestrial extraterrestrial beings yeah that's that's really intriguing hmm. well i think both are pretty interesting answers and they're both flat rolls, as you <laughs> speculated. Uh, uh, could be. I that... think actually, Jax is better because I hadn't worked in the sacrifice angle. Yeah. What is uh, well? So, do we want to go with that one? Or I yeah. like it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, you let's... roll because I already rolled. It's a flat roll, so let's see how you do. If you get it wrong, then uh, the terrestrial ones were correct. Yeah, then, 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 it's, <laughs> so, then it's yours. <laughs> yeah. Someone has stolen all my dice, so let me just roll with the computer. Uh, that's a seven. Okay, you are oh, correct. Oh, sorry, an eight. Uh, an eight. Is it a plus one, or is it a flat roll? Flat roll. Mm. Okay, yeah, it's a seven then. You are correct. Uh, so that leaves the shale, uh, the shale oil mining contracts open, or that clue is still available then. And because you're correct about that, you have unlocked the question, if they're from somewhere else, how can you banish them from our world? That's a complexity four. Uh, resolve the mystery by sending the Deep Lake Devils back from whence they came, never to return. <laughs> that sounds like a really hard <laughs> thing to do, but... Yeah, no, what do I know? You just gotta, you gotta do a mass sacrifice, that's all. You know, just give them what they want. <laughs> um, all right. So, okay. So you are set up to continue the second branch of these two mysteries and the investigation. So that's great. Um, you decided off mic that you were not going to watch a tape this night phase. And so we know that for, for the night phase, for Zachary's night phase, Zachary's on uh, La Tristeza bridge with Silas and Deputy Renita has just pulled up onto the bridge. We last saw Amber and Shane chatting at 26 Rodenbecker, but of course in the evening, I'm sure there might be other things that you're gonna do. So I think, I think probably this night phase will be long enough for you each to take like one or two actions, I think. Mm. Um, Amber, what do you have in mind? I could see Amber spending time with Shane going along, whatever she's planning. 
either exploring more uh, regarding the devils mm. or um, Linnea. Mm. But I think uh, uh, Zachary is near Linnea at this moment, right? Uh, Zachary is not. No, Linnea is not no. at the bridge. <laughs> Silas and oh, Zachary are at the okay, bridge, but Linnea okay. is not there. Mm. Uh, Samantha might check in with you because she may know where Linnea is. Samantha seems to be have a pretty good read on Linnea's movements. Um, yeah. So that might affect what you end up doing in the night phase, but we don't. Mm -hmm. but, but but until that happens, what do we think we're going to do? Uh, well, I think Shane is going to go interrogate Dolores now that she believes that there's something deeper that she might know. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Intriguing. So Dolores, uh, so Amber, that just leaves you. I mean, I, I've got the date uh, scheduled with Wayne, so maybe uh, something happens during that. Oh, you have a date uh, with Wayne. That's right. Yeah. Okay, I just good. remembered. Yeah. And maybe maybe flying creature or someone else turns up. <laughs> we shall see. Okay, I think I have a pretty good read on what everybody wants to do. That works for me. Uh, let's take a five minute break so I can think about scenes, and then we'll come back and do our new phase. Zachary, it's early evening. Sun's basically down, though it's still a little bit bright out. But it'll be dark very, very quickly. You and Silas are on the jumper bridge. You've seen all the things we described last time. No sign of Linnea. When Deputy Renita pulls up in her police vehicle. Now, Zachary... You, like the rest of the house, know that Renita was involved in the things that happened to Ash, among other people. And I'm curious how you respond to her presence here. What do you do? I think Zachary's heart starts beating faster and he just turns to Silas and says, shit, this He's like, it's that psycho cop. What? No, Renita's okay. She probably just no. wants to... Dude, she's really not. Just... Oh. She rolls down the window. <laughs> hey! I heard that there were a couple people out here on the bridge. I uh, just want to make sure everything's okay over here. Hey, Silas. Sheriff's actually looking for your sister right now. Do you know where she's at? Silas says, uh, no, I don't know. And then she looks yeah. past Silas and says, oh, hey. That's, we wanted to make sure she wasn't here. That's all. Cool. Um, well, if you want, you can hop in and I can, uh, we can go drive around looking for her together. No, that's okay. We, I have a ride already. Um, I want you to make the night move. What do you think is going to happen if you lose your composure here? She's going to find some spurious reason to detain me and make me go with her, and bad things are going to happen. Um. I think it's worse than that. You're not going to notice some very clear and present danger outside of the truck mm -hmm. if you wish to continue and not get in the car uh roll with composure please and i don't know if i don't think your conditions actually apply here yeah i'm just seeing if i have anything in my I don't think I have anything that springs to mind. Uh, <laughs> uh, I rolled a five, including a five. my composure. We will come back to this in a moment, except 
I know I noted earlier that like it's going to get dark pretty fast because the sun is already below the horizon. Uh, you notice it's getting dark much quicker than even you would expect. Amber, Wayne pulls up in his, I think he drives an old red pickup and he honks the horn out front of 26th Rodenbecker. No, he doesn't honk the horn. That's not very gentlemanly. He gets out and he comes up and let's paint the scene. How has our ranch hand Wayne cleaned up special for tonight? There's so many ways I could go with this, but mm -hmm. I think that I think he is uh, swimming in the uh, the scent of Axe body spray. Why? Yeah, he has his hair like very slicked down, except for like one kind of awkward cow like at the back. That's just kind of he hasn't, you know, didn't spot that in the mirror. I'm gonna add in that he's definitely wearing his his cowboy shirt with pearl snaps. Um I think he's trying to impress Amber and he got a necklace with a, a pentagram on it. Fantastic. Uh, that's awkward. Um, <laughs> Shane, I think you answer the door, if that's okay. Um, hi. He says, oh, uh, hi. Uh, I was here looking for, um, Amber. Really? And she just sort of gives him the up and down look, like, really? He's like, uh, yeah, we were gonna go grab burgers and then, uh, maybe go driving. I I'm sorry, are you, are you like her sister or something? No, I, I... I uh, just uh Amber. Uh Amber, you might what do you do? Um, I think she's got like a stylish leather jacket um that she's wearing and um she says, Oh hi, and gives him a hug. He's like uh, yeah, so are you all ready to go? Um, I have to actually swing by the ranch really quickly just to pick up something for Daryl, but then we can uh, we can head out. Sure. Uh, it was nice. Have a good night, Shane. Nice meeting you. Yeah, yeah. Stay safe. Uh, Shane, you're going to the ranch too. I am, but I'm not going with them. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> So you can go get in his truck and Shane, I guess you're going to drive out to the ranch as well. Or what are you going to do? Are you, like, it's going to be kind of weird if you both it show is up at very the same weird. time, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, you're following us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she would, she would give her a little bit of distance, but yeah, she'll, uh, she'll make her way towards the ranch. And I think that she's keeping a deliberate, you know, several cars uh, between the, the two of them, distance between the two of them. Um, it's trying to be as discreet as possible. Yeah, I love it. She does make a note of his license plate, though, in case something funny happens. Yeah, <laughs> very good. Let's just pick up with the on the on the road to the ranch. Um, so Wayne's like, "You look really pretty tonight." Thanks. Um, gosh, I'd like to make a compliment as well, but it's very considerate of you to clean up that way. And he's like, oh, well, I just wanted to 
you know, make a good impression. Sure, but, but he, le- he leans forward, to, you know. so his little his little like pentagram medallion like <laughs> dangles a little bit, you know. Oh, so you practice the dark arts as well. He's like, uh, you know, I'm looking into alternative spiritual paths, and I think he kind of like feels a little embarrassed suddenly and takes it off and hangs it up on his rearview mirror. So, so why do you still have to work tonight? Oh, I don't have to work. I just have to go pick up something for Daryl. I don't know why he told me. To, he told me to swing by. He wanted me to pick up some papers to bring. Uh, so, uh, fair enough. Where, where do um where? Uh, so your friend Shane, what's that all about? What do you mean? Oh, uh, she seemed like a really nice girl. I just curious oh yeah she is she yeah. is um i mean when when her girlfriend's going to visit uh maybe we could go out together i think it'd be good for her yeah oh, yeah like a double date thing yeah that's cool. yeah exactly yeah that's that's cool um so what was that situation at the ranch earlier today with Missy Donut and Nikki. You all seem to know each other. Do you know the term it's complicated? <laughs> all right. Okay. So I sorry I asked. I will No no no. I'm just asking because it's actually not complicated. Oh, okay. I'm I'm just considering my options and see um, who is out there. And there's so many interesting people around here, you know, just like you. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, right. Uh, well, and here he turns onto this like little like side, like kind of service work road that kind of goes around the far side of the ranch. And Shane, you can be turning you'll turn onto the main kind of like drag up into the main house. So the two of you will kind of split off from each other at this point. It's really, really dark all of a sudden. Zachary. Renita says, no, it's really no big deal. You can just, just hop right in. Oh my God. And her eyes get wide and she goes for her gun and she jumps out of the truck. Silas is hanging in the air. You can't see what happened to him or what has him, but his legs are kicking and he's being shaken like a rag doll and there's blood raining down atop you, Zachary. Renita pulls out her gun and starts firing off rounds Pop, pop, pop. Zachary, I want you to make the night move. What are you afraid is going to happen right now? How do you react and what are you afraid is going to happen if it goes badly? I think Zachary would react by taking the wheel of Silas's car and just trying to gun it to get the hell out of there and hope this thing that this thing eats Renita. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you afraid is gonna happen if you fail? Uh it's gonna reach through the windshield and get me. It's worse than that. Uh you'll be pulled out and you will be uh you will be eviscerated by the deep lake devils. You're going to roll with composure here. I think um hmm. Your regular dice is fine. Any good case for anything in my corner of the house? Let's see how this goes. Ah, oh, that's a 10. Hmm. That's better. Please go ahead and describe your escape. Yeah, so I think as I 
presume Silas must have been like pulled out through the windshield of the car or something. Oh, I imagined you all were out of the car. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I guess we were at the at the railing of the of the bridge, and as yeah, as Renita starts to unload her weapon into this thing or things, Zachary just crouches real low and pops the pops the passenger door of Silas's car and like rolls over into the driver's seat and just praying that Silas left the key in the in the ignition, which he did, and just guns it out of there and floors the accelerator and yeah, leaves leaves Renita behind and he's just kind of muttering under his breath, I hope you get eaten. Shane, when you pull up to Rodenbecker Ranch, um, there are no cars in the driveway and the house is really quite dark, though you do see a faint blue glow coming from one window. What do you do? She'll, uh, I mean, yeah, I think she'll just park the car in the driveway if possible, uh, um, or at least get in a close step to the house and just sort of knock at the front door. I, like, she's not trying to be stealthy or anything like that. No one responds to you knocking on the door, but the door is ajar, and it just pushes open. What do you do? She this kind of shudders a bit. Um this, this can't be good. Um, but I think she just goes inside. She does, you know, again, the white girl, hello, uh, stepping into a dark, uh, kind of sketchy place. I want the night move just to enter this dark, creepy house. What are you afraid is going to happen if you lose your nerve? Um, afraid that she doesn't know anything about Dolores other than what Zachary has told her. So I think that she's more scared of Daryl and his reputation. And I think that she's worried that he's going to confront her. It's worse than that. Daryl will have been taken over by the signal. And you'll be dealing with a very, very bad Daryl. These things happen. These things do happen. You're going to roll with composure for sure. And let's take a look at your conditions. Um, composure for now is fine. Uh, that is a 10. Nice. Just tell me how you steal yourself as you go inside. She steps inside. There's the creaking of the front door in an otherwise almost cavernous ranch style home. And she sees the different trophies on the walls, the different family portraits in the dark. There's a moment where she steps and obviously the floorboards creak. Um, and she thinks when she hears that creak that she might be better off just stepping out and removing herself from this, but she's already too far deep in. And so she just gently closes the door behind her and begins to walk towards where she, like the room that she saw the blue glow coming from. Yeah, there's a hall. And at the far end of the hall, there's a room. The door to that room is open and there's a blue glow of a television coming from that room. Do you approach? Yeah, she's gonna approach. Is is it open or is it just sort of like the light coming from beneath the door? No, the door's open. Okay, yeah, she'll. If you get closer, you can actually see the TV. Yeah, she'll uh, she'll step not into the room, but like at the threshold, and just sort of peek inside to see who's inside. As you move to the threshold, you see it's it's Dolores's room. You see the lazy boy facing away from you, facing to the TV. And on the TV, you see your brother's face. Let's cut over to Amber. Amber. Wayne's going on about like 
you know, he's kind of talking about himself quite a lot, you know, and why he moved out to New Mexico and, you know, um, how he got into ranching and he's kind of going on a little bit as he's kind of taking you down this little like kind of service road. You see a bunch of cows stampeding toward the road. They're about to come up the ditch and they're about to slam into the truck or something. It's bad. He hasn't noticed it yet. What do you do? I'm uh, going to uh, alarm him and say, what's over there? Uh, can you go faster? Those cattle going to crash into you, us, right? I think this is going to be the night move just to react quickly, essentially. Mm. Um, I think it's going to be with, I'm going to say vitality, actually. Um, mm. What do you think is going to happen if you fail? Well, we'll we'll crash right into the cattle. It's worse than that. Wayne will be killed in the crash. Go ahead and roll with vitality. Hmm. 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 Don't really have something that would help me. So let's see how it goes. Oh, there goes my die. Ah, uh, it's a seven. you react you he he sees he's like oh shit and he like begins spinning the wheel uh to to get out of the way to or slamming the brakes uh the truck does go into a ditch but like kind of gently but you're wrong well, gently in the sense that you're not crashing but you are getting jostled around quite a lot i'm going to give you conditions uh bruises i just think you get knocked around a little bit but we mm. see these cows like panicking riot or like or, or, or uh, stampeding across the across the road Wayne's like holy shit what's going on fuck and he gets out of the truck unbuckles his you know seat gets out really quickly uh, grabs his hat you know and he's got his hat takes his hat off and he's kind of looking to see what the hell's going on and then you see shadows in the sky Let's pick back up with Zachary. Zachary, you you see the same shadows uh, behind you in the rearview mirror, and you see the you hear and you hear the report of a Renita's gun, and you see the like the orange glow of her gunfire, you know, popping off. We don't know what her fate's going to be, but you're coming. You're you're bolting off, and you're about to T-bone another car that's coming. By the bridge, what do you do? You're muted. Just try and slam on the brakes and swerve, even though Zachary's not the best driver in the world. It's the night move with vitality. What do you think is going to happen if you fail? Uh, I'm going to hit it, and someone's going to get hurt. Uh, it's worse than that. So are you. Uh, go ahead and and maybe hurt very badly. Go ahead and roll with vitality. That roll for me. Ten. Nice. Four six on the dice. Uh give me this give me the scene, action hero. What what's going on here? Yeah, I think I think Zachary had turned the lights off of the car in order to try and hope that that would throw the the flying creatures off his trail, or at least help to. Um, so he doesn't see this car he's about to hit until it's almost too late, and it's only its lights side on that, that alert him some, something is there. And I think he just yelps and hits the brakes and swerves the, swerves the wheel and ends up kind of like plowing through a load of like scrubby brush at the side of the at the side of the road, but manages to hold it together and, and get past it. The other car stops. Uh, you realize now that it's Samantha Harrington. She gets out and she's like, oh my God, are you okay? And she's like, oh, oh, hey, it's you. You're, you're Shane's friend. Yeah, you, uh, 
You may want to get in. And Were you here with something. Silas? Yeah, something. I'm sorry, but something real bad, real bad just happened down at what? the bridge. Oh my God. Did did Linnea jump? Oh my God. And she no, no, runs not off. Linnea. She runs in the direction of the bridge. You can see a devil swooping down at her right now. What do you do? I spin the car around and try and like gun it in between her and the devil so that she can like jump in before it gets her. Roll with fight. What are you, a night move? What do you is gonna happen if you fail? I'm either not gonna be fast enough or I'm gonna like hit her run her down by, by accident. Uh, it's worse than that. Uh, she will die and you will have to be dealing with the devils. Go ahead mm -hmm. and roll with vitality. Again. Five. Five. I think I might be turning a key. Oh. <laughs> we'll come back to this in a moment. Shane. Your brother's on the TV screen. I want the night move to keep your composure. What do you afraid is going to happen if you fail? Good question. Um, that he is going to talk directly to her and blame her for his death. It's worse than that you're going to learn that he is caught in some sort of strange, terrifying limbo. Please roll with sensitivity at disadvantage because if he watched it all happen, if you That's wish to continue. Fair. That's fair. Um, let me see if I have an item here that I want to use. So I would like to try and justify uh, that in her purse, she keeps her character sheet of Oleander from the game of Serpents and Sepul Sepulchers. And there's a brief moment where she remembers Oleander's bravery and her majesty and her, her, her control over herself and her, her faculties. And I think that she's maybe even a little subconsciously using that as like a touchstone and anchor role-playing games, saving lives. Let's see. Exactly. Roll with, it's still sensitivity, 2d6. That's a four. That's four. <laughs> Ash says, Hey, sis, you're so close. You're so close to joining me in this place. I, I don't know why I'm here. I don't even know exactly what happened to me. But I know, but I know that you're the reason why I can't escape. If you're there, then I have to be here. <sighs> Maybe it was always this way. Maybe there was always just supposed to be one of us. I don't know. <sighs> but you're really, really close. <sighs> she steps into the room almost in a daze. Uh, any sort of sense of etiquette or respectability is gone uh, and everything anyone else in the room doesn't matter she just kneels in front of the TV and just puts her hand to the screen Carol Ann style and she says no no it's always been us together tell me how I could help
I know how you can help, says Dolores from the Lazy Boy. She's wearing a little sailor's outfit. And she gives you a little white Cracker Jack sailor's hat. And she says, you can be my backup dancer. She turns and looks up at Dolores says, Dolores crowns her with this sailor's cap. Ash is putting on a sailor's cap as well on the TV screen. What do you know? Now stand up. Take your position. And she points you like to basically be standing next to the TV. And she takes center stage. And she looks into the camera. She's ready for her close-up. She's ready for her solo. In olden days, a glimpse of stocking was looked on as something shocking, but now God knows. And all three of you say in unison, anything goes. Amber, you see one of the shadows swooping down at Wayne. What do you do? Is the car still functional? Yes, but, well, yes, but you're in a ditch and you're in the passenger side. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> kind of like him, so... I think I'm going to I mean my first reaction is to to yell at him and and uh, say get the fuck back in the car. Okay. Um night move. What do you think is going to happen if he doesn't listen? Well, a devil's going to munch him. It's worse than that. They will then start smashing through the truck windows. Please go ahead and roll with composure. What? Uh, that's night. Nice. Yeah, you yell at him, and he's like, he's like, he he quickly jumps back in, and as he slams the door to like close it, the shadowy flying thing just smashes up against the glass, creating a spider web of glass on his driver's side window, and then another one smashes into the main windshield, and then another one in the rear, and then on your side. And they keep pelting the glass over and over again, creating more and more cracks. And Wayne's just like screaming. He's like, holy shit, what do we do? What do we do? What do you do? <laughs> think on it. Yeah. I'm also going to give you a, well, no, I think that's a good enough complication on that role. Let's go back over to Zachary. Zachary, I'll take the fiction. You... You're having a moment tonight. You're 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 Steve McQueen. You are you are you are the fall guy. You're the action hero. You're driving through. You whip the car around. You you're you can see Samantha running towards the bridge. You can see this thing swooping down. You intend to like get in between them. Let her hop in the car. It's gonna be great. You peel out. You do the whole thing, and you just you just overcorrect a little too far. And you smash into Samantha, who goes spinning sideways, uh, foot overhead, um, 
and as she spins like some of her guts like spray out of her mouth like a like a like a whirling you know uh like water fountain just spattering the window and then she smashes up against the windshield and that shadowy thing smashes into the windshield and you can feel its leathery wings beating against your face its razor tail is jabbing at your chest what do you do you're muted i would like to turn a key <laughs> very well uh would you like void or child I... Or not void. Uh, what's it called? Desolation. Desolation. Oh, I'm going to turn desolation. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Which one? The fathomless well. Oh, interesting. Um, I will then honor that moment by asking you or telling you that for a brief moment, it seems like the sun reappears in the sky. How does that help you in this moment? I think it, um, like almost like a ray of it catches the, the flying devil and throws it off. So it, you know, it almost gives a little shriek as the sun hits it in the eyes, and it just gives gives me that time to like screech to a stop next to next to. But uh, name's blanking on the name. Mine's blanking on the name. It's and like throw over the lean right over and throw open the passenger door and just shout, "Get in!" She gets in. You can drive off, and we'll pick up with that in a moment. Amber, you benefit from this. There's a little beam of sunlight coming from somewhere. The sun was already lowered. Who the hell knows what's going on? But it's enough to cause these things to fly away from the window, the windshields. I'm going to give you just a shaken condition, Amber. Same thing with you, Zachary. I'm going to give you a shaken condition. I am already at three conditions. You are already at three conditions. Ah, that is... Uh, hmm, do I want that? Well, uh, I would say go ahead and clear against my better judgment and just replace it with Shagan. I'm not going to make you turn a key for that. Since you turned a key to, to get that result. Shane. Anything goes. Your brother is currently using the power of the place he is in to trade places with you. If you don't want that to happen, you need to tell me how you're resisting it. I don't know. I kind of want it to happen. Do you want it to happen? <laughs> um, no. Uh, but kind of. Uh, but no, I won't resist. Uh, um... There's no way I can use my formal suit for this, can I? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm going to resist. Uh... What do you do? So I imagine as this number is going, we are, because you mentioned a camera, I'm imagining that this is no longer just a bedroom, but a set and this broadcast that we're a part of now to whomever whatever is watching would see that both dolores and ash are dancing with uh with precision and with with enthusiasm but shane is just sort of like stepping along following what she can about uh doris's dolores's uh choreography from behind but uh I think as that's happening, we see uh, sort of this white static tendril coming out from the television screen, and it is starting to form into sort of this like bony, gaunt hand, and it's sort of reaching out, trying to grab Shane's hand as if to 
not necessarily pull her, but keep her bound. Um, and we start to see Shane's body flicker in and out as if she herself is made of signal. I guess this is the night move again. <laughs> it's going to be the night move, yeah. Um, what do you phrase to happen if you don't resist? Uh, that Ash will take my place, but it won't just be Ash. It'll be Ash affected by mm. this, this signal. Mm. It's worse than that. I think Ash is going to bring something with him, too. Roll with sensitivity again. Um, do I want to put you? Yeah, I want to put you at disadvantage because yeah, if you yeah. watch it all happen, yeah. There you go. Uh, that is a six. At a certain point, you find yourself looking in. You look, you're looking into Dolores's room. You see Ash in the room with her. And the scene is just getting smaller and smaller and smaller, almost like a circular screen wipe. Ash turns and looks at the TV, therefore looking at you. And he raises a bony white hand and waves goodbye. And then Dolores, she looks at you and she smiles and she's much younger. And they both just lock arms and the wipe concludes and some words appear on the screen that's all, folks. Unless you turn a key. You're muted. I will turn the fathomless well. Ah, how does that beam of sunlight help you in this moment? The beam is in this place. It is a stage light and uh it shines on Dolores at first until it's just suddenly moves and shifts over towards uh, to where Shane is. She stands still frozen by surprise as there's this uproarious applause for her as she's just sort of standing there in the spotlight. And I think that is when, uh, when, we're sort of returned to Dolores's room and it's the three of them, it's the TV, it's Dolores and her just sort of standing there in the, the blue of the, the TV. Are you all right, dear? What just happened? And she looks at the TV screen. Is Ash on it or is it just blue it's just, or static? It's just static. She says, well, we just performed A song you did so so well. I, I didn't do anything. I... Oh yes, you did. And she takes your hand in her bony hand. Yes, you did. And I think we're going to have a chance to perform more in the future. What happened to you? And she sits back down in her lazy boy, exhausted. She's still old, Dolores. She says, I sank down beneath the waters and I was baptized. I was baptized in the signal. My What's the signal. <laughs> it comes from deep below and it shines. 
shines, it shines, it shines in all of us. Oh, and it shines bright in you. I can see it. I can feel it. Something's happening to Linnea. I think it might be tied to all this. <laughs> Don't worry about Linnea. She'll be dealt with in due time. What does that mean? I'm going to give you a condition to wrap up this scene. Anything goes. Fabulous. Um, and if it's okay, I think that there's a moment where, uh, where Shane sort of feels a, a warmth behind her, uh, like a sort of peripheral light. And she looks outside the window and she sees a sort of flash of sunlight. With all that, I think that will wrap up our night vase. We'll see what Samantha was doing at the bridge next time. We'll maybe have a little a little uh, early morning denouement with Amber and Wayne next time. But for now, let's go to our questions or dawn questions. This goes back to last time as well. Um, the Latchkeys have not yet resolved a mystery. Uh, and signals from the other side were not available because we didn't watch a tape. However, uh, Taylor or Zachary, did you share a good memory from your childhood? You're muted. Uh, no, I did not. Did you cut loose for once? I think so. Going, yeah, tonight. Yeah, I'm think... wild in the car. Yeah, I think so. Yes. I'd agree with that. Yeah. Uh, Amber, did you cut loose for once? I mean... Last time, laying the groundwork for Polycule. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm into it. Yeah, I'm into it. I'm into it. Uh, did you deliver a chilling monologue about something that happened to you in the past? I was planning to, but I did not. Okay. And Shane, did you have a good, did you share a good memory from your childhood? No, I don't think I did. Did you go out of your way to reconnect with Deep Lake? Uh, well, I went, to the ch I went to the church. Oh, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the cemetery. Yeah. Mm. I will let you have that, and that will conclude that part of the dawn phase. You can mark new dawn questions if you wish, and I think that just leaves um, stars and wishes. This is punchy. Um... It was punchy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Punching uh, through windows. Punching, yeah. Punching through dimensions. Uh, dancing to them, I guess. Um, uh, yeah, no, this is a wild night phase. This is like the most sort of supernatural night phase I think we've ever had, um, where we've like de de like where we've directly faced off with that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, no, it was weird. I loved it. Um, I loved uh, start to the the weird sort of little threesome dance thing that Shane and Ash and Dolores were doing with the sailor hats on the TV thing. I thought that was really fun. Um, Zachary uh, going full action star and then that being met with like terrible roles. I thought, you know, that's, that's always sort of a joy of, of role playing games. So dice, you know, the dice will sort of tell the story and uh, you can kind of get, get, you know, roll with it how you will um no pun intended um and then yeah amber i really loved uh i, I loved your treatment of of wayne um and it, it was also just a start of you jason sort of how you played off of each other with that interaction before everything went to shit um wishes uh to get more answers to figure out to investigate more but like to also figure out what the fallout from this is because we've all sort of now really directly encountered stuff that like there's no deniability about it but like we are so deep into it that we have to sort of come to terms with it and so i want to have that moment
Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed the um the there was a kind of delicious awkwardness to the start of Amber's date with with the farmhand where they it was almost like they didn't know what to or she didn't know how to respond to his attempts to break the ice. Um that was that was really cool. Um and I, yeah, the the creepy you know, classic analog horror of something, someone coming back from the dead inside the TV was great. Uh, I hope, uh, I'm curious to see what happened to Sheriff Renata. I'm guessing, I'm guessing Zachary's wish that she got eaten by the devils is not going to come true. And he's going to have a lot of explaining to do, um, given that Silas is dead and well, at least he's got backup in the terms of some in terms of Samantha has seen one of these creatures and knows he was like for real. Uh, so that should that should be a lot of fun to 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 like dig further into the the outcome of this night's events. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, oh, go ahead, Michael. Sorry. I had a blast. <laughs> it was a lot of fun to see how you brought in the um, those flying creatures, made them really dangerous, and everyone kind of was affected more or less. And and um, even Shane, who wasn't directly affected, had also that um, bright light. Which was uh, quite nice to see, and and I love how you portrayed Dolores, and I was so curious if if um, Jack, if you would actually accept being replaced <laughs> um, by by Ash, because that would have been really interesting. But I'm glad you you turned the key. And I really loved that uh, moment where you made that. Uh, I wrote down "white girl, hello." <laughs> that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, Zachary being an action hero, interacting with Sam, but then running her over, but not really turning a key. That was pretty cool. Um, in terms of wishes, I really want to know who made it. Who who survived this night? What's the fallout? And after that, um, I'm I'm really curious how we are going to deal with um, Renita, especially since the night of the Bone Wolves is going to happen rather soon. So yeah, I'm I'm curious how it will turn out. Yeah, I had a great time. Uh, I. I, I, I like a night I like an action packed night phase sometimes and this was a really fun one um and it was fun to sort of like like last time we're seeing all the mysteries sort of like intersect with each other and kind of weave in and out of each other uh, not the dream today but last time we saw the dream kind of play into things and um and so that was really enjoyable I I love a tremors style you know like monster thing you know that, that that people are sheltering from i think that's always a really really fun uh kind of thing it's a fun desert get you know trope as well and so that was really enjoyable um yeah i'm also really curious about the fallout of this like did renita survive uh was what what happens now that silas is dead what did samantha want why was she there looking for silas where is Linnea? there's like so many open questions here and I think they're going to be really interesting to to explore to see what happened. Um, I'm also really curious about the like what's going on with Wayne and Amber now, like after they have endured this, you know, this mm -hmm. this together. Um, and also very curious to see where this thread goes with Shane and uh, and Shane's brother and Dolores. Uh, maybe there's nothing else there to do. I don't know, but I kind of like the idea of like we've a couple of times the signal was mentioned and there's this idea of the signal kind of reaching you know from the other side so to speak um and uh so it's fun i like to keep exploring that especially as we get closer to confronting the tv odyssey mystery so uh yeah just a good time and 
yeah, punchy, I think was a good way of putting it. So I don't think I had anything else though. Okay, well, if there's nothing else, uh, we will wave goodbye to people watching the video.